This forest, Carrington Forest, is the center of Cortez Island and contains most of our forest resource base. Uh, there, is, there is other land on Cortez that's further north that's still forested, but it's mostly rocky bluffs and stuff. So this is the heart of the, of the pristine forest of Cortez. What Island Timberlands is planning with the clear-cut logging will wipe out the ecosystem, the wolf habitat, the cougar habitat, the mushrooms that people eat, salmon streams that are going through here, and um, will essentially destroy the Cortez resource base for generations to come. We live in a temperate rainforest where during part of the year we get huge amounts of rain which is absorbed by the forest and in the summer we, get, we often get drought conditions. As soon as you cut this then you also get huge amounts of erosion and this creek would be gone. This is a salmon stream, coho fry we found in this creek. So the IT lands then, what we're looking at, you've got them outlined here in what, yellow? Yeah. Okay. So this is IT all the way across and then into the Carrington watershed. So we've got, yeah. this is this is what you're calling the Green Valley watershed then. Yeah, the green, green line. The green line. Okay. And David Shipway had sent along a um, Nassau image of the Vancouver, of the Gulf of Georgia with the heavy fog that was here about three or four weeks ago, blanketing the area. And when I looked at that overall image on Vancouver Island, you could see all these patch cuts all over the place and behind the heights of land. But he does uh, reforestation for, on Vancouver Island for the timber companies. And he was saying at the ferry dock a few years ago that uh, everything you can't see behind the heights of land that you're looking at from your front window, you can consider is gone. I haven't actually seen the outline of Island Timbers planning or uh, uh, harvesting planning, but uh, it's my understanding that they have indicated that they're prepared to, uh, again, clear cut on an industrial model is what I understand they're using. And basically all the timber land they've got, we, uh, if we cut the forest and, and uh, send the money on to the bankers and the financiers and, and uh, and don't have any of it reserved here for the people that live on the island. Uh, there's really not much economic benefit to the people on the island from, from the industrial logging that we've seen. It doesn't seem to, to uh, provide any, any uh, job opportunities here. Any farmer that's growing a crop knows he has to put nutrients back into the soil. He can't continue to draw on the nutrients that exist in the soil for very long before they're gone and then they won't grow that crop any longer. So he has to put things back in the form of fertilizers and additives if he's going to be successful over time. Where you, we can't afford to do that on a forest landscape level. And we, we need the, the salmon and those things that yeah. come back naturally into the system and the, and the nitrogen that comes from the epiphytes yeah. to uh, be maintained. The epiphytes are basically ferns, mosses and lichens. And as I was saying earlier, they're, they're capable of taking the nitrogen straight out of the atmosphere into their tissues and, and recycling that through a forest ecosystem. But it takes them, after a clear cut has happened, it takes them anywhere from 50 to 80 or so years before they really start reestablishing themselves in the crown of the, and on the trunks of the trees that are growing. And probably up to 250 years before all the different varieties that exist in an old growth forest finally reestablish themselves. We're standing in, sort of in the bottom of the bowl of, of, of the Green Valley watershed here. And there's, you know, they did some logging up into these forests. They, they cleared a lot, but they left a lot of pockets of old stands of trees. So this particular Doug fir is just, a, you know, again, a beautiful example of um, a really healthy, relatively fast growing second growth tree that's just done extraordinarily well. Um, and, and it, it's reached culmination, so it's reached its maximum heights. It doesn't have any root rot. It's got a beautiful straight leader on it, and it's starting to just really start to pack on the meat, on the heartwood. In 20 to 30 years, it's going to be a spectacular stand of timber for good quality lumber because it's, it's matured. It's not over mature. It's got gro great growing medium, south facing hill. And of course, Island Timberlands has got a road flagged right through this forest, right to that tree, um, <laughs> obviously. Due to the fact that it was our first settlement, it would be nice if it was the first uh, settled uh, Cortez ecoforestry 
piece of, uh, or, you know, a piece of land that we as a community could manage rather than a corporation. We could actually bring some uh, resource dollars back through various, where, whether it be trails, people using, utilizing trails and paying a trail use fee, uh, um, you know, small woodlots, uh, some wild crafting, some harvesting of the natural resources. You know, I, I do feel that this is a, a tremendous opportunity to take a look out of the box Everybody here in Cortez is definitely thinking out of the box. So when it comes to solutions, it's definitely the parameters have been pu pushed in those uh, departments. We're at a point right now where we got the opportunity, if, if we're able to pull it off, between the Crown Forest lands and the Island Timberlands uh, lands, to uh, create a, a really sustainable community forest on the island. Here's Switzerland harvesting about 10% of what we harvest in British Columbia and getting just as many jobs out of it. Mm -hmm. They were getting 11 jobs per 1,000 cubic meters, and it's because they do a lot with the wood before they sell it off. Mm -hmm. They make things out of it, and they make valuable things out of it. We just sell it off as raw logs now. Mm -hmm. But I think that the, the value of, of uh, what we've got here to uh, the people here on the island and to uh, people in the rest of the province and even the rest of the world um, has a has a value that that uh, I think even economically will will outweigh the value of the the uh, logs that could be harvested from the land. Right now, the the laws are in place to favor the corporations over the communities. When that happens, then it kind of becomes our civic responsibility to change the laws. I mean, slavery was abolished through mass mobilization. Otherwise it would have been still legal. Women got the vote only through mass mobilization. Otherwise that would still be the law that women can't vote. Same with clear-cut logging. It's been destroying the land base of British Columbia for so long now and it's entrenched in our political system and backed up by our laws. But when you look at it and the impact on the communities and on the people, it's just not right. If, because this land is owned privately by Island Timberlands, to give them the benefit of the police force and the law and to give them back, government backing in order to destroy this ecosystem and what it will do to the people who live here for generations to come, there's no way that that's okay. We can sit back and watch it happen, but then we have to tell our kids that, yeah, we sat back and waited, did nothing while their heritage was destroyed. People are doing it all over the province and have been working against the, the forest industry practices for a long time. And this is just one more place where that's going to happen.